Welcome to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Whether you are a seasoned investor or building a new real estate business, this is the show for you. Whitney Sewell talks to top experts in the business. Our goal is to help you master real estate syndication. And now your host, Whitney Sewell. This is your daily real estate syndication show. I'm your host, Whitney Sewell. Today, our guest is Stoney Stonebreaker and Lennon Lee. They are the founders of Passivo. Stoney and Lennon started as independent real estate investors searching for new multifamily acquisitions. Their chance meeting at a, a CCIM event in 2017 led to a partnership in teaching the advantages of passive investing in commercial real estate to their families. They continued to reach out to their communities until it led to creation of Passivo REI. So Stoney and Lennon you know, they have created a platform and we're working on this platform to help passive investors. And and we go into that, uh, you know, that focus of theirs. We also go into a recent deal, uh, a 262 unit deal that they, that they worked on in Houston. And then, but we go through to some, some ways that have helped them uh, to, to raise more money, right? I mean, some, some specific things that they are doing that they have found uh, that consistently bring investors uh, to their network. I hope you enjoy the show. Stoney, Lennon, welcome to the show. You know, Lennon, I know you and I have known each other for a few years now. It's been incredible to see your growth, everything you've been doing and working on. Uh, looking forward to hearing more about that uh, right now or on the show. But, uh, you know, tell me a little bit about uh, Lennon and Stoney, what you all are working on, how you all are working together, what this looks like. Yeah, man. Well, first of all, thank you for again for having us. Uh, yeah, it's been a while since we since I was last in your show, uh, I think Tony was uh, as well uh, a few months back. But anyway, yeah, man, thank you. And um, right now we're, we're pretty excited with the new with the new company. Uh, Tony and I have been working uh, together as partners, uh, as limited partners, and as co GPs, and you know different forms of partnership um, in in the commercial um, real estate space, specifically with multifamily deals. And uh, we finally decided um, about a year ago to launch. Uh, well, actually, we launched this year, but um, we decided like kind of last year to formalize our partnership and build Passivo, which is, um, you know, the, the new company, the new brand where we're basically at the end of the day, we're trying to build a community of passive investors and, and trying to ourselves, of score, of course, but also help um, our investors to become better passive investors. Um, we share our, our, you know, content and education and, and best practices on, on how to do just that and ultimately be able to achieve um, financial, but more importantly, time freedom for our families and our investors' families. So we're excited about that. Uh, we just recently closed the deal. We're trying to look for the next one, raising capital, um, doing marketing, doing a, a little bit of everything, just trying to grow the company and the brand. Awesome. Awesome. Um, Passivo, I mean, tell me, I guess, tell me a little bit more about that focus and how you're helping investors and what that looks like. Yes. So uh, the name Passivo, it's, well, it's, it's Spanish for passive, but we kept the two S's there. In Spanish, you only cool. have one S. Um, and the idea behind it is, uh, well, I'm, I'm, a, I'm from Latin America. Uh, I, I moved to the United States about 11 years ago. So um, a lot of our investors are from Latin America and our, you know, friends and family from from Venezuela, where I am from. And, you know, um, ultimately, I think we have a, um, a pretty unique story of me being Hispanic and then partnering up with Stoney, who uh, is, well, I can't, as American as they come, <laughs> but... Uh, you know, he lives in Miami and we're, we're here in, in, a, in, a, in a community. We have a bunch of friends that are Hispanic or have Hispanic heritage. heritage. And um, ultimately, we wanted to focus our brand on helping uh, the Hispanic accredited investors build wealth and, and build passive income and um, achieve financial freedom as well. So we, that's been the idea, uh, to be honest. Right now, like in the next, in the past couple of months and, the, and, the, and into the future, it's when we're actually going to be implementing specific strategies to tackle that market and cater to those uh, investors. Of course, it's not exclusive. We're going to be uh, always taking investors from, you know, wherever they're from. But um, that's kind of what, what, why we named it Placebo, just to 
um, basically have a identify it with a with a Spanish word and the Hispanic investors. Yeah, I, th- I think it's incredible. I, I love that name and that there's a connection there uh, as well. Uh, you know, why don't you all tell me, Stony, uh, like your role versus Linens in this business? Uh, what do you all do? What do you all focus on, just independently, that's helping you all move forward? Well, uh, to uh, summarize, well, first of all, thank you for having us, Whitney. We really uh, enjoying it. Um, and I, I kind of focus more on on uh, deal sourcing. Uh, our, our business model is to partner with sponsors who who are experts in a local market and who understand the market. We can't ourselves be locally uh, in in all the markets. So we want partners who we've vetted, who we've known for some time, who we've done checks on, and and make sure that they are good, solid uh, people and make sure that we uh, create the kinds of deals that our investors are looking for. So I focus primarily on our uh, uh, sponsor relations and, and Lennon then focuses more on the investor relations. And the base, basically that's how we've divided up our, our roles. Okay, no, that's awesome. Uh, well, so I guess give us a little more about, um, I know sponsor vetting, relationship building. I mean, that's like the key, right? Uh, I mean. Uh, t- you know, as far as the scaling your your multifamily your business, uh, I guess give us some of those key things as far as when you all are vetting sponsors. Even what are you all looking for when you're vetting a sponsorship team? Yeah, we're we're looking uh, for people who bottom line is who people who we can trust because we think that the um, there's all kinds of ways to mitigate risk in, in investing and in, in alternative like uh, like multifamily uh, properties. And but the mo- most uh, easy well, it's easy to to do some diversification of your investment portfolio by geography and maybe by by industry or sector and so forth. Uh, but we feel like the uh, the key to the being successful in this investment strategy is to have really good team partners and professionals who sure. really know what they're doing. And and not only that, but especially that they're trustworthy. And they're good, good folks that, that can can take a deal and can uh, can make the best out of a deal when when you know surprises happen and they they will in in these deals. So what we do is we'll do a background check. We'll get to know uh, partners for a while. We'll do all kinds of referrals. We'll do uh, online searches as well and different things like that over time. We'll attend industry events in person and, of course, meet them, go to their markets, uh, tour properties with them. We do a very thorough background check. We have a whole process that we go through like that that, uh, so we can make sure that the partners that we're teaming up with are the right kinds of partners. For our our money that we invest in, our family's money, as well as, as our investors' money. Of course. Yeah. If they're not, they're not trustworthy. I say, you know what, the, the operator's character means more than anything else. If you, if you don't have that, then the deal, the market, none of that other stuff really means anything. Um, Um, add to that. Um, you know, we, like Stoney said, we have like a a pretty extensive, uh, I would say checklist of, uh, items that we want to make sure we, we, you know, cross up up that list. Um, in terms of you know background check and, and understanding how they're legally structured, uh, how they structure their deals in front of their investors to see if it makes it to sense for us to um, you know joint venture with them on the on the general partnership side and um, you know a, a bunch of stuff from how many principles there are on their on their um, on their team right if one of them you know goes away like who's going to take care of uh, of the operations on their end. Uh, but I always like to say that that type of checklist, uh, everyone can obviously build their own, uh, but you can go just Google it. You'll, you'll find a bunch of resources on, on, on that. So that's like the on paper technical stuff that everyone knows that you need to, you know, do and, and go out and check the numbers, the, the, how the, the previous deals and all those numbers, and all that good stuff. But at the end of the day, there's going to be a ton of um, teams out there that uh, are, very well qualified in terms of the numbers, right? But do you like them? Like, do you want to be, do, do you want to do a deal with them? Do you want to be communicating with them? Um, you're getting married to these guys for a few years anyway. And um, ultimately, if you don't like the guys, then it's just, I don't, I don't think the money uh, is worth it, right? That's the way we, we look at it anyway. So for us, after all the background checks and all the 
the the technical stuff we we want to have uh, a good relationship so we really focus on meeting our sponsors um you know personally and try to build a relationship on the personal side see how they you know if you're eating out with them then how, how do they treat the waitress how do they um treat their family or their partners and and that tells you a lot about the person and i think that beyond the legal aspects and all that that's going to tell you uh if you're in 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 business with someone that 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 you like and that you trust i like how you said you know seeing how they treat the waitress uh you know, or their family i mean i was that's so that's so telling of that individual right and and you mentioned like being connected almost married right to this person for or this other business for you know five years potentially or longer seven years yeah. and and man, yeah, that that one communication or how they treat that waitress could show you some of those things uh, that you yeah. need to know uh, before you ever even look at the project. Um, but on, yeah. you know, on that note, um, what about, I know you all closed the deal recently. Uh, why don't we talk about that a little bit? What was that? Yeah, yeah awesome, man. Yeah, that's a 262-unit apartment complex in uh, Houston, in the southeast uh, um, market of Houston. Uh, it's called uh, Webster. I think it's it's the city, right, Sony? Yeah. Uh, and um, man, pretty excited about that one. Uh, we brought our investors. We partner up with a pretty uh, good group that we've had a relationship for for a few years. Uh, finally, we decided to partner up on a deal. This one made a lot of sense for 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 all of us. And um, yeah, we closed about a month and a half ago. I mean, well, I don't know when you guys are listening to this, but um, we closed in July 2021. And um, it's a pretty good deal. The reason the reason why we like it is that from day one, it's it's cash flowing pretty solidly. Uh, we're projecting eight percent for our investors on, on on year one, which at this point in time, it's uh, it's pretty rare to find that plus a good value at play. Um, you know, right now, if if you want to, and I always talk about this, if you want to keep the same risk profile that we've had. Since we, we get, since we started investing in multifamily in 2000, late 2015, um, you you need to understand that something's got to give, right? Like th- there, you need to sacrifice, uh, or, or at least you need to understand um, or adjust your expectations, right? It's if if the same risk profile is what you're looking for, then the numbers are not going to be the same uh, as four or five years ago. I mean, you could find a deal, but not it's not like. On this case, uh, we really believe we did find a deal that um, hits the, the target numbers that we were, um, you know, happy with, and the right balance between cash flow and appreciation play. Um, which again, it's pretty rare right now. It's either yeah. more cash flow or maybe cash flow suffers on year one or year one and a half, and then it's more of an appreciation play. So we're pretty pretty happy with that. We have a, a few. A bunch of new investors that came into this deal. So, you know, the new, this is actually the new, the, the first deal that we did under the Pasivo brand. So it's uh, pretty exciting as well because of that. No, that's awesome. Uh, congratulations on that closing. Uh, tell me something you learned through that process, through this deal specifically, uh, you know, getting it to the closing table. Tony, what did yeah, you I think, learn? Yeah, I think, uh, I think it's, uh, we learned a little bit with each new um, uh, sponsor that we get involved with and how they do the deals, how they communicate, especially because that's real important to us and to our investors is how well do they communicate uh, what the, what the process is, what uh, is going on with the deal and to make sure that our investors know. And so uh, this sponsor is very good and we really, uh, like that. Um, I think we found out, uh, especially on the property itself, that there are some really uh, kind of a little bit different uh, 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 value adds uh, a- activities there, some amenities. There are some small, smaller buildings there that are, are uh, the laundry units, and they have empty second floors on them, and that they're going to be changed into a fitness center. And so each each property seems to be uh, kind of challenge our creativity or our partner's creativity to get the most value add out of there to identify different kind, kinds of ways to, to increase the value. 
so that that property can uh, can bring back the best returns for our investors. And so that was new, a kind of a different challenge in some areas there. I mean, we've done fitness centers, of course, before, but this was uh, kind of a different uh, way. And we also had some backyards there that uh, were not being taken advantage of uh, as well. So there's a, some other different amenities like that that we uh, we really liked. No, that's awesome. It's just neat to hear too. I mean, it seems like every deal we do, I mean, we, we learn a lot. You know, there's like something new that happens uh, that we haven't seen before or haven't heard of or, um, yeah, uh, it's just a, always a learning experience. Uh, what about just your all's, I know you all are focused on, uh, you know, investor relations and, and uh, meeting new investors, those things. Uh, tell me you know, like your best source for, for meeting new investors right now. What are you all focused on to grow that, grow that side of your business? Um, yeah, well, I, at, we've been raising capital for, for a, you know, a couple of years now and, um, it, we're starting, we're starting to see a lot of, um, people. And this is pretty interesting because at the beginning, yeah, you have friends and family, people that trust you, but then you have friends that are necessarily not your best friends, but just people that, you know, are acquaintances that, that, you know, you know, from the club or wherever, uh, and they've never, basically they were waiting for you to, Okay, um, be successful or fail or what you know whatever. Just wait <laughs> and see what happened at the beginning, and then uh, at this point we're starting uh, to get a few leads of people that um, yeah we've known for for years, but they've never really decided to invest before. And now they're thinking, okay, now now I see that you've done a few deals. Now 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 I understand what you do a little bit better because of all the content that you've been sending out. So that's starting to pan out. Um, you know, pay. pay good dividends in terms of uh, getting new new potential investors. So I, I guess consistency uh, in putting content and educating people and sharing what you do with people out there for, you know, a few years that that eventually um, starts to pay off. Um, what else? I would say, well, one, one, one source, it's, it's, all, it's definitely um, bigger pockets, man. Um, when I started raising capital, that was, um, you know, a platform that I was pretty active on. Uh, for whatever reason, I I kind of stopped posting for for at least for a year, maybe a year and a half, um, and then we kind of started posting and being active again on Bigger Pockets, and it's at least every week we're getting a new potential investor uh, from Bigger Pockets. So um, it's oh, that's that I, I would say like if you're raising capital out there. For sure, be active there. I think that's that's a great place to build relationships and share your expertise, and uh, that of course brings um, potent, new potential investors. Yeah, that's a great point. You know, I've not heard too many people talk about like posting on BP or being religious about you know being active on there lately, or maybe over the last you know six months to a year. Uh, speak to that a little bit more. Like when you say posting, are you writing a blog? Or are you just writing a question? Or what? What? What are you posting? And how do you? How are you adding value to people or to potential investors? Yeah, both. Yeah, yeah. I think both. We um, what I, I what I've been doing uh, mostly myself is to either respond to posts that other people have put up there. They're asking for advice. Uh, one recently was, uh, you know, they were looking in, in South Tennessee for some markets and wondered what uh, what anybody thinks about some markets there. And I know a couple of the places there from my family having a summer house in, uh, in Southern Tennessee. So I, I put on a few suggestions and ideas, plus with our experience in syndications over the years, a lot of people are wondering, what are these things called syndications? And they're newer investors. Some people have good paying W-2 jobs and are looking to just get into the real estate investing space as passive investors. And so I'll suggest some things, maybe some books to read and different things like that. Uh, sometimes I'll post a, uh, a question or a, an explanation of some kind of term that you'd find typically in a multifamily glossary up there, just so people can, can respond to that and say, do they agree with that? Do they have anything to add to it? And so there's all kinds of ways to uh, to generate uh, uh, transactions or interaction with other people like that. 
No, that's good to know. I, I just know often like a listener hears something like, well, posting on this. Well, and they may not really know what that means yet. You know, if they haven't been active on social media yet, uh, how yeah. else have you all been sharing what you like, uh, Lynn, you mentioned, you know, sharing what you've been doing. And, and I, I think it's so true. Like, obviously so many people in the beginning are skeptical, right? Well, is he really going to keep doing this? Is, is he going to be successful? And then all of a sudden, you know, two years later, they're like, okay, yeah, he's, he's really doing this. You know, like talk about 262 unit deal. I mean, that really brings some, uh, some, you know, what legitimacy, right. You know, to your business and to what you're doing after they've seen yeah. numerous projects like that. Uh, and so many other, other investors who have had success with you. Uh, how are you sharing that? What have you seen to be the best for you? Just so people, more people can learn about you all. Yeah, no, definitely. So, well, what Stoney said on bigger pockets, just what Stoney said, just posting on, on the on the actual forum. But then every week we post a new article, like an actual blog post, on uh, on bigger pockets as well. So that that's that's super helpful, you know, being consistent there. Um, and it's like a more robust, more educating piece of content for everyone rather than answering a question. Uh, but both help. I think everyone should be doing both. Um, other than that. Well, at, you know, we kind of stopped for the past um, few months, but part of our strategy is just, um, you know, posting videos into our YouTube channel. Um, that that always uh, helps. Having a podcast, uh, at, like like you do, well, obviously you you already know this, but um, just whatever platform, just choose a platform. If you're if you're this is if you're getting started, just choose a platform that you that you feel comfortable um with meaning if, uh, start by thinking well video written or audio and then go and then choose a platform that makes sense to you but um for us specifically yeah we're at this point we're active on basically all, all social media uh all the platforms from linkedin to youtube and and you know I'm, I'm pretty active on instagram myself and um the other thing is which we're getting back on track with is the, the in-person meetup uh, that has, um, that had a, you know, wonderful results for me when I got started, I built, I started a, a big meetup here in Miami and, uh, you know, specifically about multifamily investing right now, we're, we're tweaking it a little bit just to be more, um, specific and more targeted with our, um, strategy and with our content. I think focus, uh, helps a lot, you know, pick a niche and, and go for it and, and go deep instead of wide, at least at the beginning, and then you can go wider. Um, and, and in our case, it's just the, the new meetup that we're going to launch, uh, soon, it's going to be focused on, on the, on the passive investing side. Um, like I think, like I mentioned at the beginning, we want to build a community of passive investors and the best passive investors there are. It just so happens that for us, the best vehicle for passive investing, not the only one, but the best vehicle is, um, multifamily syndications. Uh, but that shouldn't be the only strategy that you look for. So sharing all this education in person with, uh, you know, the network of investor, it's going to be super valuable. And then online, all, all that you do in person and all that education, just put it on a piece of paper or on a piece of audio or video and just uh, distribute it to all social media. You never really know where, where investors are going to be coming from, um, especially if you have a long-term view. Um, you need to understand, well, Today, active investors might be more like on LinkedIn and maybe bigger pockets, like the people that are actually going to invest with you right now. But on Instagram, you might be building and nurturing relationships or or potential leads for, you know, for the long term, for 10 years from now. Like you start educating them now. They're not accredited. Maybe they're not really in a position to invest passively, but in five, 10 years, they might be. So, um, you know, just be thoughtful about all those uh, things, I guess. Yeah, no, that's incredible. Uh, and uh, no doubt, I mean, we, we all want to be the best passive investors we can. We, and we need to know of networks and meetups like you're talking about. Uh, but, but it's just neat too, you'd like to hear the hustle behind, you know, what you all are doing and, and creating this educational uh, vehicle or platform for, for investors as well. Uh, what about, uh, what's a couple ways or maybe even one way that you all have recently improved your business uh, that we could apply to our syndication business? Well, I, I, th I think uh, part of it is the uh, is the education aspect to help the investors become better investors. And that's what we, as Lennon mentioned, that's what we're trying to do is make sure that they are better investors for their own families and for their own children and uh, leaving a legacy if that, that's what they want to do. And so uh, I think uh, that in our case, 
Um, we have a, uh, a small um, collection of uh, professionals that we refer to our investors. They're legal, tax, business, investment professionals that we don't get a referral fee for, but we like uh, we like the, what they do, the, how they do business, and we um, refer them to our investors so that they can uh, get more professionals f- for their own uh, investing uh, strategy, for their own uh, investment planning and so forth. And so that they can use that to create themselves, uh, for themselves, a better investment plan and talk yeah. about strategy and so well, forth. Approach, I would say, right? Like, uh, um, basically, that, that's one of the things. Like, I, I, see, I think there's uh, many different companies that, like I said, first you want to go deep, you want to be very specific, but then you want to go, uh, you want to try um, as soon as you can, widen, uh, widen the, the, the scope a bit in terms of uh, the services that you offer and, and like, the, or not the services, but the value really that you offer, right? Because ultimately uh, we want to have uh, investors that are educated, not only on, okay, how to, how to, how to specifically invest um, in a real estate syndication, but then, the tax strategies, the state planning, um, how much money can you keep, uh, and 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 the, uh, a more wholesome approach to their portfolio, uh, understanding uh, uh, or, or at least pointing them in the right direction into other investment strategies. Right? We 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 understand that again. Like I mentioned before, we we have a, a very powerful product, if you want to call it a product uh, or, or offer. But there are others out there that you should probably be investing in as well. So we want to uh, ultimately, uh, right now, we, we started shifting our strategy to include uh, that conversation with our investors uh, and allowing them to, to, again, build a more robust portfolio rather than just, hey, invest with us. And then, you know, you you do your other stuff with some other people that can help you. Um, so I love that. You're, you're, you're really fulfilling like other needs for the investor, right? I mean, you're becoming more of that one-stop shop for a lot of those things that, that you already know that they're going to have issues with or questions about, right? Uh, and ultimately, you're going to build more, more loyalty and, and long-term relationships, right? Uh, you know, the more times that they're calling you as opposed to having to find other people, uh, you know, if they can, if, if you all can help them with that. It, it's interesting. I had a guest earlier uh, today. I was interviewing and he sold a, a quarter million dollar business uh, that he sold when he was 19 years old. And and it was a lawn care business. It was before he got into real estate. But all that to say, he talked about uh, how he could, uh, he built those relationships. Uh, he sold this lawn care business because of the loyalty of all these clients that he had. And he said he built that loyalty because, you know, it, it, he, w- he would cut the grass for, for an elderly lady. And if she ne- needed some, some boxes carried to the basement while he was there, well, he would do that for her. Right. You know, it's like over the few years time, like little things like that, man, built up to a quarter million dollar business that he sold when he was 19 years old. And and it it makes me think about you all here, like you're carrying the boxes, right? I mean, you're 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 finding these other things that that investors need uh, that you already know they're going to need help with. Right. Uh, I mean, it's it's Mm -hmm. great. Uh, It's a great. uh, Yeah. Just way to think about that. Uh, what about uh, any daily habits that you all have that you're disciplined about that have helped you achieve success? Um, I think uh, I think my yeah my dog keeps me on on schedule. He he gets me <laughs> up early and he wants to be fed and taken outside for a walk. So I get up early every morning to uh, do that, and that's a good habit that I have. Yeah, yeah man. Um, well, yeah, exercising. Um, I spent. Uh, I recently got back on track with my, with my fitness and all that, and I, it's just. And again, it's no secret. Like everyone knows. Like I don't. I don't think I've ever heard anyone regretting working out. Right after you work out, you feel good because you feel good. Like and you feel proud of yourself. You feel uh, accomplished something. It gives you energy, physically, mentally. It's just good, and everyone knows that. But. And, but I don't know, I guess we forget it and it, it's hard sometimes, you don't have time, whatever. Uh, we make up excuses to not do it sometimes. And then you fall off uh, the wagon and you, you know, you find yourself um, six months without really being active or a year or I don't know, even more. Um, so, just, you know, getting back on track with, with fitness, it's, um, it's been, you know, amazing for me. Um, and and just staying on top of um, 
of your education game, um, listening to podcasts or reading, whatever whatever way you want to consume your content, um, it's always uh, it's always pretty good. Uh, I listen to podcasts every day. Uh, sometimes uh, about real estate, sometimes just about life. It's just listening to people that inspire me and that um, keeps me, um, you know, it, it keeps me well inspired, I guess. Um, so, so yeah, I, I think education and and uh, continuing uh, to educate yourself every day and and staying fit. No, that's awesome. Uh, yeah, I, I've I've fallen off that bandwagon time and time again. It seems I get back on it and and mm-hmm. know how you know how much that exercising uh, it just makes me, how it feel, makes me feel better. Like you said, you've accomplished something, and man, you're ready to go tackle something else, right? Uh, but uh, what about uh, if you had to pick one thing that's contributed to your success? What would that be? Um, for me, patience. Um, yeah, and long term view. I have. Uh, the the nature of our of our business uh at, definitely when when you're getting started like like we are it's uh there's not much money coming in in terms of you know you're not you're not becoming uh, pretty rich or cash flow rich at the beginning uh the bulk of the money the, the way we make our money as sponsors and, and general partners comes at, at the end of the deal um so being patient and uh, and and not listening to what people you know will tell you, and uh, you know I've had a bunch of friends that they've never really understood that my business model, or what I was doing, and and um, they were thinking, hey man, you need to you know you need to come work with me or do this with me or do, you know do you have this opportunity, and it's like um, staying focused and believing on on what you what you want, it's and and, and what you do, it's um, it's been. It's been huge um, for me and being patient and understanding that, yeah, it's going to pay off. It's going to take some time and it's for the, it's a long-term play. But um, again, it's not easy, of course, but, but, you know, <laughs> right now I'm talking like this. Sometimes I have some, you know, my good days and bad days, but uh, you know, you know, I think right now or in general, this is the way um, I think. And, 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 you know, it's helped. It's been pretty helpful. Yeah. Patience is key, man. You, you gotta be willing to stick it out for the long haul. That's, uh, that's for sure. Um, yeah. the hustle man required to get started in this business is quite intense. So, yes. um, uh, so, uh, how do you all like to give back? I think, uh, the way we like to is to, as we mentioned, kind of mentioned before is to help our investors become better investors all around and help them so that they, can build a legacy, build a, a better uh, investment plan, maybe retire earlier um, in their in their uh, investing careers, uh, so that they can um, also maybe leave a legacy. Um, we like to think that uh, by making sure that our our investors are better investors, they become better investors for us as well as themselves, and that they will understand uh, where the where the, the high costs are that take away from their investment growth over the years. And so they, their investments can grow faster, can grow um, more broadly and, and get to the point where they can give back themselves. And we'd like to give back. I mean, we've, before the COVID, we were just about to start on a program teaching underprivileged kids uh, at Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, about the cash flow uh, for kids game. Uh, that Kiyosaki has done, and uh, that put a, a damper on that, stopped that. But we're, and we're w- waiting to get that started again once uh, things get a little uh, better for social distancing and so forth. And we think that just educating people in that that kind of thing is good, but and bring, bring, giving back to the community and, and our investors can and also also do that. Yeah, and I, I would say that the 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 biggest way uh, we we're actually giving back and. It's it's by giving back um, people, giving back giving back our investors uh, their time. That's that's why that's that's really the whole reason why we're doing this. We're, we're trying to we're just trying to achieve time freedom. Uh, we just want our investors and ourselves to be able to not continue or to eventually not have to trade our hours for for dollars uh, and just getting our time back just time for to do whatever we want so that's that i think that i'll say that's the biggest one yeah no time freedom man 
that that commodity of time, right? You can't get any more of it. And and uh, you know, when an investor can build a relationship with somebody like yourself and trust your process, uh, and and know that man, they don't. I mean, you're you're providing the amazing opportunity for them, right? To uh, to really come in under your vetting process and also just have the opportunity to the deals uh, that they wouldn't typically have an opportunity for and to build that passive income stream uh, so they can hopefully gain more time back, right? Um, so, uh, Lennon, Stoney, pleasure to meet you, or really to meet you, Stoney. Have you both on the show? Um, Lennon, great to catch up again. I know it's been what, two or three years since uh, you were on the show last and and uh, but just great. I, I love the name uh, Passivo. Uh, also, I hope I'm saying it correctly. Uh, yeah, uh, that, that's incredible. But uh, incredible to see what you all are creating and where you're going and how you're helping investors. Uh, tell them, the listeners, how they can get in touch with you and learn more about you. Sure. The, well, the, the easiest way is just go to our website, um, PassivoREI.com, um, and I'm sure you'll you'll have it on the show notes. Uh, but p a s s i v o r e i dot com. Um, just click any of the buttons there that say invest with us. It'll take you to uh, open our um, an account or a profile rather on our investor portal. And then you'll be prompted to set up a call if you want to connect that way. But if not, then you, you'll, you'll be already, you know, with a the profile there, you, you'll have access to our newsletters and all that good stuff. Um, I would I would also say if you're interested in learning more, a little bit more about the, you know, our investment philosophy at, at Passivo, just go to passivorei.com forward slash dream. You'll be able to download um, a copy of our ebook right there called Four Investing Rules for the New American Dream. And um, other than that, we're, we're pretty active on all social media platforms. But, and, you know, Lennon Lee and Stony Stonebreaker, I don't think they're very typical names. So, um, you know, you'll be able to find us pretty quickly. Thank you for listening to the Real Estate Syndication Show. Brought to you by LifeBridge Capital. LifeBridge Capital works with investors nationwide to invest in real estate, while also donating 50% of its profits to assist parents who are committing to adoption. LifeBridge Capital, making a difference, one investor and one child at a time. Connect online at www.lifebridgecapital.com for free material and videos to further your success.